infection rates are still higher than they were in say, November Nine. or December or October, sorry. And this weekend, we even saw a brief spike in the number of people who died. And that's today's big hard fact. On Saturday, February 13th, Nigeria recorded 24 COVID-19 deaths, the second highest total since um, the pandemic began. So like I keep saying, we are not out of the, of the woods yet. And, and that's why for the rest of the hour, we're going to be talking about some of the things that is being done to get us out of the woods. We'll talk about vaccines. We'll talk about the uh, control of entry into the country. We'll talk about the challenges that we're facing. And throughout, I want to hear from you. I want to know if you have survived COVID. I want to hear um, from real people, you know, who have beat this thing or people who have lost the battle to this thing i have a friend whose father died on the 7th of this month he was in the icu for a while he recovered he came downstairs he was talking with his family members and well they thought he recovered but he hadn't really recovered and uh, after a few days he relapsed again and then unfortunately passed on so they're running around right now trying to bury him and um it, it's 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 just so terribly sad you know because um again he was 83 and th they were hoping that he'll be around for a long long time but unfortunately he lost the battle to covid19 you know and there are lots of stories like that personally i have colleagues here who you know who you love <laughs> who have um um, um survived covid19 so personally, I know a ton of people who have survived it. I know some people who didn't survive it. I know some people who it kicked their behinds. Oh, my God. I, I have a friend who is in his 40s and who caught COVID. And I told you about it earlier this week. And he had blood clots. And he had to have several surgeries to uh, take care of that situation. Because if the clots had gotten to his brain, he could have died. He barely survived COVID. So throughout the show, I want to hear from you as well. I want to hear if you have survived COVID, if you know somebody who has survived COVID, um, if you know somebody who did not survive COVID, let me hear from you. And I also want, want to know what you think about Nigeria's fight against COVID. I'm going to bring you different points and I want you to tell me what you think. Now, before we get into COVID proper, let's talk about Ebola. Because life isn't on pause. Here we are fighting COVID and all of a sudden, Ebola pa pops back up. So we have to talk about it because it may mean that we have to reallocate public health resources or change strategies. Now, why do we have to have a plan for Ebola? There's been new outbreaks in DR Congo and Guinea. And the Nigerian government is saying that it's taking steps to stop the virus from coming in. So, for example, they have put all points of entry on high alert. So airports, seaports, border posts. From now on, they're going to be on, uh, on extra lookout for people who are coming in from affected countries. NCDC is also telling hospitals to watch out for the signs and symptoms of Ebola and um, to get the travel histories of people who are showing signs. So two numbers, one of the numbers for men, one of the numbers for women, so that everybody can face their own number and get through. The number for women, 01465-7190. 01465-7190. That's the number for our female callers only. For the men, 0700-993-993-993. Fidelis is in mile 12. Hello, Fidelis. Uh, good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon. Have you survived COVID? Ah, Sandra, I'm not a patient of COVID, though, and I don't pray I'll be one. Okay. Now, do you think uh, Nigeria's public health and disease control system can withstand COVID and Ebola at the same time? I doubt. I really doubt. Sandra, I remember when um, uh, before the... Uh, COVID came into Nigeria. Yeah. They told us that they are fully prepared yeah. and they have put measures in ground. Yeah. But today what is happening, we cannot contain the virus. 
Now Ebola is out. This one they are telling us that they have put down measures in a uh, seaport. Don't be surprised that at the end of it, you see that nothing has been done. Mm. So I just beg the public, wherever we are, let us just try and protect ourselves. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Fidelis, for calling. We appreciate it. 99.3. Sorry about that. Call back. 0700-993-993-993. And the female line, the female only line is 01465 7190. 01465-7190. 99.3. Hello. 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 I don't think there's anybody there just yet. But yeah, uh, keep that call coming in. 99.3, hello. Hello. Okay, 99.3. Hello. Oh, no, I thought it was somebody else that was shy as well. Sorry, call back if you can, all right? We've got um, Eze in Egbeda on the line. Eze, how are you? Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Eze. Welcome. Yes. Did you survive I COVID? Want... Well, I do. You did? Tell me your story. Well, uh, I just want to chip in uh, in the Bible aspects. You mm, see, okay. uh, the Bible says, in the last days, the religious time shall come. You know, all this, all this pandemic, all this war, rumors of war and everything, I think it's high time we should know that end time has near. So mm. it is no longer news, except those people who doesn't believe in God, who doesn't, who are not born again, that are you know running health and scatter on this issue. We are on the last days now, so so many things will be happening. We should know that it is end, end time. So it's, it's no longer a strange thing. The way that we we are in the Bible. Um, uh, uh, the believer, do you understand? So that is what I just want to let the Nigerians and every other person who cares about Jesus Christ to know that we are now in the end time. Mm. So many, th- and there are other things that will still come up. Mm-hmm. There are other things that will still come up. Mm. So this is not this is not the last, and this is not the least. So everybody should prepare to prepare for Christ's second coming. We are already at the end of the world. Thank you. Thank you, Eze, for calling. And uh, incidentally, uh, we were told the same thing in 2000, right? We were not supposed to make it to 2000, and then it was 2020, and then it was 2012. Anyway, we've got Joy on the line. Joy is in Ijesha. Hello, Joy. Thank you for calling us. Hello, Joy. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome. Um, do you know somebody who survived COVID? How, did you survive COVID? No, but I didn't. I didn't have a COVID. Okay. Now yeah, tell me. Your... No, my relative that survived it. Oh, you have a relative, a relative that survived it. Yeah, the country. Yeah. Oh wow. Tell me their story. Do you know their story? I don't know the details, but he was he was sick, so he was isolated. Mm. Then they used to visit her in the same place for some weeks. We had that situation. Okay. Okay. We thank God for that. We thank God for that. No be small. Do you think uh, <laughs> our healthcare system can handle COVID and Ebola at the same time? Well, I don't think so, but all I know that we, we should help ourselves. We should listen to our health or whatever. Or to look at yourself. Little little guidelines they gave us, we should observe it. Mm. I think that God will help us. Okay. Observe the gu- guidelines, Joy says. And God will help us uh, with the rest. Thank you very much for calling. We appreciate it. We've got um, CK on the line. CK, welcome to the show. Hey, Sandra, good evening. Good evening, welcome. Uh, good to get through to you this evening. Yes. Thank you. Mm. Um, I know somebody who lost the battle oh, to um, um, the pandemic. Um, in fact, it was so sad that the the man's wife... I was at a wedding some years back. Okay. So the man's wife had something to do in the UK, okay. I think some training. So okay. she moved to from Sokoto to Lagos right. with the kids, left the man there in the um in Sokoto. So she, she traveled from Lagos to the UK. The children were to remain in Lagos, she would come back to pick them. But mm. while she was there, after some time, I think during the lockdown, um the man just 
suddenly died and nobody knew what happened. <laughs> so when the saints, let me say, emissary and Lord, so when the shop found out, uh, when they did the autopsy that he had COVID and he died out of COVID complications, uh, he was never taken to the isolation center. It was uh, after they did the autopsy that they found out all that. So it was a very, very rude shock Sorry. to the family. Then for me personally, around that time, you know, there was one time it was raining that, um, I don't mean rain, it was <laughs> it was trending that people were losing their sense of taste and, um, and smell. And mm-hmm. smell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that happened to me. I, I was ill for about three days and, you know, I used malaria drugs, the thing they did not work and all that. Mm-hmm. But, but at the end of the day, when I would um, get out of it, and, um, I, I sure found that food weren't going. I wasn't tasting anything. I, it didn't really occur to me. I thought because I was ill for a few days mm. until I got into my car one day. I wanted to go out. All this oil they sell in little, little bottles. Mm. This day, mm-hmm. you know, I, I had it in the car. I wanted to use it. I, 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 it had very nice uh, smell, but I could not perceive it. Mm. So that was when I realized what's going on. What's going on? <laughs> I didn't even know that time that a uh, lot of sense of um, smell and and taste mm. were part of some um, uh, pointers that terms. you have mm. you have COVID until a colleague, no, a client was now talking about it that mm. a doctor had COVID and he said he didn't know he had COVID until he lost his sense of smell and taste. That was when I shouted, are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> Sandra, I pray God will keep every one of us. Thank you so Amen. much for this. But whether Nigeria can handle e- Ebola and COVID at, at the same, same time, time. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I think um, many things we are doing right now, um, that wash your hands, use face masks, keep some distance, you know, mm-hmm. uh, where this, many of the same things uh, they they told us then for during Ebola. the Ebola time. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but whether um, when people, more people are now getting down with um Ebola and COVID at the same time, I, I'm not sure we have the facilities to handle th- that kind of um, issues. Yes, let's hope we don't get there, man. CK, thank you so much for calling us. I've got a message here from Chief Andy Obofuribo, um, who is listening. He says, COVID has hit my circle a lot. Right now, I'm watching the virtual service of songs for one of my mother's oldest friends. COVID killed her and her brother. Oh, Chief, I'm very sorry for your loss. Um, wow, that, that's so terrible. My God, two people in the family gone just like that. If you're just tuning to the show, uh, we're talking about Ebola before we get right into COVID. Uh, all of a sudden, Ebola is uh, back in the news. We've got uh, outbreaks in DR Congo and Guinea. The Nigerian government is saying that it's taking steps to stop the virus from coming into Nigeria. They've put all points of entry on high alert. Seaports, airports, border, uh, uh, um, posts. They are on extra lookout for people coming in from affected countries. They're also telling hospitals to be on high alert. We've got Meg in Lecky on the line. Meg, hi. Welcome to the show. Hi, Sandra. How are you doing? I'm good. Okay. Um, I actually attempted taking the COVID test myself some two weeks back. Okay. Because I came in contact with a friend who who personally just said, oh, that his wife tested positive for COVID. Ah. <laughs> I almost dropped dead. <laughs> and I said, what about you? Mm. And he said he is positive. I said, what? So what are you doing with me, you, sir? Why are you going around? It's... Why did you come around? Ah. Oh, he came to your house oh, with his COVID cell. He came, he came to my... He visited my house with his wife. Hell, Chimo. I made prepare soup for them. Hell, Chimo. But the look I had was that <laughs> I had an appointment in VI, so I left there with my husband. But my husband was wearing his face mask all through the visit. Okay. And he didn't even know anything. Then two days later, mm. he now came to my office. And personally, I said, ah, your wife is supposed to be going back to the UK and all that. And he said, oh, no, she can't go because... He tested positive for COVID. And I said, what about you? He said, he too is positive. Oh, God. And I shifted backwards even further. <laughs> I was wearing a mask because I usually will wear that in my office. Yeah. You know, so I've also lost people. I've lost two church members who died from COVID. Um, some people in my estate have had COVID. So it's, um, it's real, really and truly. And... Um, Every day I go out and come back, I just do the steam inhalation and I beg my little son who goes to school 
because children, their immunity is higher than ours. Mm. So he can have it and be asymptomatic and um, will pass it on to us. Mm. So I plead with him to just wear his face mask. So he's real. I've, I've lost people. Two of my church members died of COVID, one on the 26th of December and one on the 8th of January. Okay. So it, it's very real and very sad. Mm. You know, some people just shake it off. There was a time I started feeling really, really terrible, like I had it. And you know, when you come in contact with somebody who has COVID, mm-hmm. you start imagining all the symptoms. Yeah. Your throat will start paining you. Yeah. You start feeling like you don't want to breathe. Yeah, sure. you start, everything starts happening to you. Yeah. You know, but as God will have it, uh, I'm still standing. Okay. Without God <laughs> for you, you Meg. So <laughs> Thank Thanks you. for calling. Uh, I have a listener who sent me a message on Facebook, and he was like, uh, President Sandra, um, I lost my sense of taste and smell since um, June 2020. Until now, I've not gotten it back. And he sent me this message back in January. And I said to him, have you been to a hospital? He said, no. I spoke to a doctor and the doctor told me to drink one thing, one thing. I said, please, go to a hospital, go and see an actual doctor. Because you said you spoke to a, I think it was a pharmacist he said he spoke with. And the pharmacist told him to drink something, something. I said, okay, you've drank the thing and your sense of taste and smell isn't bad. Perhaps it's time to go and see an actual doctor. Because June until now, that's a very long time to not be able to smell anything or taste anything. Me, we love food like this. I can just imagine myself being unable to taste stuff for more than six months. My God. 0700-993-993-993. You can also call our female-only number if you are a woman. The number is 01465-7190. If you are a man and you call that number, we're going to drop the call. 01465-7190. But um, everybody else can call 0700 993 993 We've got a message on Twitter, but I'll take that message after speaking with Anonymous. Hello, Anonymous. Thank you very much for calling us. Hello, Anonymous. Welcome. Yeah, Sandra. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, I just uh, uh, hear my voice on this COVID thing. Yes, please. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, recently, uh, no, not quite recently, it's up to three months, mm. I got uh, tested positive. Oh. But I never believed it because uh, I'm one of those uh, skeptics about uh, this COVID thing as far as Africa and Nigeria is concerned. Have you called me before to, to share your skepticism? No, I have not. Okay. This is my first time. All right, go ahead. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, after it all, I felt possibly those who die of COVID, Hmm. we should concentrate more on what actually killed them. Because the trend is that those of them that all died of COVID are those that are probably sick of something else. Because even when I tested positive till before then, till now, there has not been any difference in my my, uh, uh, body chemistry or whatever. Uh, no headache, no fever, no cough, no nothing, no loss of smell. But at the end of the day, I was uh, not positive. And I didn't believe it. I had to go with the protocols. And at the end of the day, there's no difference in my uh, body system up till now. It's getting to three three months and up above right now. And only for my personal doctor, when I, because I report daily to him on the progress, he told me what I was. I said, I'm not going to take anything because I don't believe in that. But then the only thing I needed to accept my just to be safe, which I did. So, and, uh, so, so your doctor didn't tell you that you were one of the asymptomatic um, patients? Because he most, mentioned it. Because he most, mentioned it. most COVID infections are asymptomatic, and we've known that from day one. It doesn't, All right. it doesn't mean that those who are symptomatic have another disease. It just means that they have now, COVID and they're only showing symptoms. That, that's what medicine tells us. That's what the experts tell us. But personally, I need a proof. Because you had well, COVID. Have to it and you, you, said it. I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry. You had COVID and you need a proof? No, what I'm trying to say is that I'm talking about the asymptomatic states. You, because, oh, you, you, symptoms, you, you, so you, have it. you were now. asymptomatic and you need a proof? Okay, now, after the test, I was tested positive. I did antibody tests. And by my own basic scientific little knowledge, I know that if I have COVID and after a little while, I, 
antibody test is supposed to be positive, meaning my body has released the antibodies to fight the strange thing in the system, which is the virus. But the antibody test remained negative, and I was there not positive for COVID. So what I'm trying to say is... Antibodies are created when you have lots of antigens. Yeah, but if you have COVID, if the you have antigens, the, virus, system, the antigens don't show up for people who are asymptomatic. So, when, if you are asymptomatic, antibody tests will be negative. Yes, in fact, that's the reason that you are asymptomatic. So, so now it becomes a one-sided thing because anybody, because what I'm saying is that a lot of people mm. probably must have died of this COVID out of fear. Mine, when I was there, not positive. I was even laughing over it because I had no fear in myself. So you're saying, no that, the, you're saying that the people who died from COVID died because they were afraid? So I said some. I didn't say all. Oh, some. I know the lady who came back, the very first case that died at Enugu of a woman, an elderly woman who came back from the U.S., but then she was told positive and she was kept somewhere. And everybody isolated him or herself from her. And she was just kept there unattended to out of fear and all that. She died. Only for them to let her out so, when she so died. They realized it was negative. So not fear on her part. Fear on the part of the ignorant medical care workers? No, fear in the sense that, look, uh, Sandra, I tell you what, you can confirm from any other person that possibly will call to say he or she tested positive. Once you are told you are positive, there is this tendency for you to be afraid. Yes, yes like I, agree with, I, I, I agree with you uh -huh. that you are afraid when you get a positive result, but that fear doesn't cause your death. Quite literally, what causes your death are the things that happen in your body. So perhaps no, you're so, not getting so enough oxygen. Perhaps On the, on, but, on the average, an ideal case, yes, you're right. But I'm saying that on an some, ideal I case, all, I, I'm sorry, some. no, it's data, it's facts, it's out there, it's written there. I, I don't know what conversation I'm having at the moment. It's written there. It's it's you know that some it's data that has been compiled been over told. and over and over since this since pandemic started. You know that some people have been told they are positive. I know somebody who was tested positive, mm. and just like me, he said no, I don't have COVID, and they said no, he needs he insisted. Then he made it a case, and. Said no, they should do the test. He insisted, mm. and after like uh, some few hours, he said, "My friend, he said no way." And in fact, he said he told that he was not going to follow the protocols. That he wants this test retested. That he's ready to pay. And by the time they retested it, he was negative. Right. So what if you are taking the first report, and this test we are taking in within twenty-four hours? What if you are taking that first report? So, I'm not saying there's no COVID. How, how many? How many? How many? How many, how many tests did you take? Myself, I mm. took two. And both I took of... the first test mm -hmm. positive. Mm -hmm. That was the swab test, mm -hmm. and I took uh, uh, the antibody test, which was negative. And that's even why I'm not convinced because. If my antibody test was positive, then I was okay. Yes, probably. So, um, so, so to yeah. be sure, what you're saying to me, you're saying to me, um, I had COVID, but I okay, I tested positive for COVID, but I doubt that I had COVID. I was told that I tested positive. You were told. Ninety-nine point nine percent doubt about it. Okay. All right. I need to take a break, but anonymous. Thank you very much for calling me. Why two? Because I'm using one to soak the whites and using one to kill the Nigeria Info. We are more than Nigeria. just radio. They are so Subscribe to our you YouTube channel them, at Nigeria they Info. Are them. Check us out on Facebook I at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow Make us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. 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 It's all hands on deck for me and my small team of 12. I know that to get the best out of them, their health must be in tip-top shape. But most HMOs I approached said I have to have at least 20 staff before I can get on a plan. They don't cater to small businesses. Then I found Reliance HMO. <laughs> and just like that, they got my team and I registered seamlessly. What's even mind-blowing is that their rates are flexible and affordable while not compromising on quality care. 
I have not received any complaints from my team since they got on board. <laughs> the service is that great. Indeed, you can rely on Reliance HMO for your small businesses and its healthcare needs. Visit reliancehmo.com forward slash corporate or call 0700-7354-2623 to get a quote for your small business and start enjoying reliable healthcare today. Reliance HMO, you can rely on us. Oh. Ah, ah, guy, what's in the make you scatter house like this, eh? I beg, you, you help me see my ATLC. Ah, I, I carry and give Shade yesterday, oh. Eh? But you know they use him again, now. Yay! You don't carry my bonus gift, Lalo Piki. Now today you go pack out. Eh? On top ATL SIM. Yes, so if you don't reach 15 days where you never use your ATL SIM, go find them now, now. Because why? Oh, go get a wolf full on top of. Hey, get 2,000 Naira airtime plus extra 200 MB for just 200 Naira. The more you recharge, the more you are wolf. To begin, enjoy this a wolf. Just dial star 241 star 7 ash. Terms and conditions, Jo. Airtel, the smartphone network. Charles! Yes, mommy? Go and bring two sachets of Hypo Bleach for me. Why two? Because I'm using one to soak the whites and using one to kill all the germs. But I can't see any germs here. <laughs> they are so tiny, you can't see them. But they are there. And that is why I trust only Hypo Bleach to kill them all. Make your white fabrics whiter and your household free of illness causing germs and viruses with the disinfecting power of Hypo Bleach. Hypo, Hypo. From Ultima, the studios that brought you Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and Project Fame West Africa, comes the business reality show Lion's Den, also known as Dragon's Den UK and Shark Tank USA. Aspiring entrepreneurs across Nigeria, here's your chance to pitch your business or idea to five Nigerian investors who are in search of businesses that are investment ready. Bring them on. Win them over with your pitch and they will invest in your business and partner with you to make your dreams come true. But the question is, have you got what it takes to survive in the Lion's Den? To apply for Lion's Den, have an existing EcoBank account or open a new EcoBank account with a 10,000 naira deposit and visit www.ultima.ng slash Lion's Den to fill out an application form. Applications close on the 28th of February, 2021. Lion's Den is proudly sponsored by EcoBank and Chapel Hill Denim in association with Bank of Industry and Development Bank of Nigeria with the LIRS as strategic partners. You get to win money. You get to win 10,000 Naira cash on the Just a Minute Game Show. Call in to any of our shows, The Morning Crossfire, What's Up Lego, The Sunny Side, and Hard Fact. Answer as many questions as possible in 60 seconds, and you stand a chance to win 10,000 Naira. Winner will be announced on Hard Fact, Just a Minute, the game show for everyone. Right here on your number one station for talk, 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. Powered by Credit Veil. Uh -huh. Hey, Oga and Madam, you don't see the room now. Make I show you the toilet where you go to share with the other neighbors. Eh? Now the toilet be this. Uh -huh. What's your problem? Oga agent, you mean say na general toilets clean, come white like this, eh? Uh, yes, now. Nah. See, what's in the day use? Take cleaner and kill the yama yama jams come out. Hypo toilet cleaner? Wow. Wash your toilet at least once a week with Hypo toilet cleaner to keep it sparkling clean and gem free. Available in sachet for 35 naira only. Mm -hmm, madam, now two years land on one collector. We go pay for six years, eh? Hypo, Hypo. God, don't you find that? When they talk about find out that remedy, they learn from where we did. Because to find the easy for me. I want to know that is what we say, easy way for me. Now licking my NIM to my glow line. Eh, don't tell me, bro. I think just when I pick up my phone, go use the USSD code. By Dali Star 109 Star, my NIN hash. Ah, uh, quickly. I go just text my NIN to 109. I think also visit glowworld.com slash NIN or talk my super fast internet. If I come to the area where we say glow world near me, like just walk and enter, and if you don't forget your NIN, die star 346 hash, you don't get them back. Some people are there, they But it's really hectic, man. From when I leave for office in the morning to the long hours at work, and then the traffic leaves me feeling tired and stressed. Guy, I can totally relate to that. I found a solution. Revital. Revital combines the power of Panax Ginseng, 11 vitamins and 9 minerals, and is clinically proven to fight tiredness and stress. 
Revital, physically active, mentally alert. A quality product from Rambaxi, a Sun Pharma company. Uncle Dentist, what are cavities? And how does Colgate protect my teeth from cavities? Does it use Kung Fu? <laughs> no, dear. Most tooth pains are caused by tooth holes called cavities. When you brush daily with Colgate Maximum Cavity Protection, its expert formula locks natural calcium in our teeth and helps protect them from cavities. It's time to upgrade to the world's most chosen toothpaste, Colgate, because Colgate locks calcium in... Yes, cavities! Colgate is recommended by the Nigerian Dental Association. Hey, what will I do now? Oh. Rumi, what happened now? My data unexpectedly finished, and I'm in a very important online meeting. I don't have any cash to buy recharge card from Alaji. I'm going to the bank right now. It's a long thing. <laughs> is that what you're stressing? Just dial star 945 hash to buy airtime and data from your Alat or Wema Bank account on your phone. You don't mean it. <laughs> oh, yeah, Tite. You can also pay our electricity and cable TV subscription for the month and transfer half of the money I used to buy foil yesterday or on star. Nine four five five. <laughs> so fast. Sorry, I'm back in my meeting. I, I can't hear you again. Keep the vibe going. Dial star 945 hash to buy airtime and data, transfer funds, pay utility bills, and perform more banking transactions without internet connection. Wema Bank, with you all the way. I won't tell you the secret of better food, Nadi. No chicken and classic seasoning powder. The ingredient they take make a me, na natural by nature. Like real chicken, rosemary, black and white pepper, garlic onion, parsley, mushroom, coriander. If you knock no seasoning powder for inside your jollof, fried rice, egg goosey, and all other soup, eh? you go no say flavor, pass flavor. No seasoning powder, natural by ingredients. Bang! by flavor. Charles! Yes, mommy? Go and bring two sachets of hypo bleach for me. Why two? Because I'm using one to soak the whites and using one to kill all the germs. But I can't see any germs here. <laughs> they are so tiny, you can't see them. But they are there. And that is why I trust only hypo bleach to kill them all. Make your white fabrics whiter and your household free of illness causing germs and viruses with the disinfecting power of hypo bleach. Welcome back to your number one talk, news, and sports station. This is Nigeria Info. It's 5.35, I'm Sandra S. Zakwasili, and you're listening to Hard Facts. Today, we're asking how Nigeria is handling the war on COVID-19. We now know how many vaccine doses that we're getting from AVAT. AVAT is the Africa Vaccine Acquisition Task Team. The number of vaccines we're getting is 1.4 million. First of all, we're going to get 500,000 before the month ends, and then we'll get another 900,000 in March. And we're getting them for free. MTN donated 7 million vaccines to Avat, and Avat is giving 1.4 million of those to Nigeria. It's the AstraZeneca vaccine. That's the one they're giving to Nigeria. Now, as you know, there have been concerns that it doesn't perform well against one of the newer variants of the virus. But the government and the WHO are saying that it's better to get as much protection as you can, as quickly as you can. And bear in mind that um, the new strain is still the minority strain. Most COVID cases in the population are the original strain. But Avat isn't our only source of vaccines right now. The Indian government is also giving our government 100,000 doses of AstraZeneca. So Nigeria needs a plan for acquiring, distributing, distributing in at one point million people. To get to her, it's got a set of task force. They're called the World Nation Committee. And they have members from different ministries and different parts of the private sector. Now, you may be asking, okay, why not let the presidential task force keep handling it? After all, they've been coordinating all COVID matters. Well, the idea is vaccine security has become such a huge task that it risks taking up all the PTF's administrative resources. So perhaps it would be better to create a new body that handles vaccines, but reports to the PTF. And we're already getting reports of the rollout plan for that vaccination exercise. Government has divided Nigerians into priority um, categories. So first, frontline healthcare workers and support staff then everybody who is aged 50 or above, 
than people who are aged 18 to 49 with significant underlying health issues. So those are the priority cases before everybody else. It's going to be very interesting to see how the government ends up determining who and who have real underlying uh, medical conditions. I mean, that's a big job they have ahead of them, enforcing that particular rule. And speaking of government enforcing rules, they are talking very tough about private attempts to get the vaccine. First, they've said that they won't allow it. They want everyone to get vaccinated through the government program so that governments can certify and guarantee the safety and effectiveness of all vaccines administered in Nigeria. In fact, government is now saying that it will not be held responsible for any vaccine that it doesn't source, import and administer itself. What do you think about that? What do you think about the government's vaccine rollout plan? What, what do you think of their priority categories? Remember I said that first it's uh, medical workers, healthcare workers and their support staff. Then everybody aged 50 and above. And then people aged 14, uh, 18 uh, to 49 who have significant underlying health issues. What do you think about that uh, plan? What do you think about their insistence that everybody must get the vaccine from them? And what do you think about this timeline for the 900,000 vaccines from AVAT? AVAT is A-V-A-T-T. 0700 I'll come to WhatsApp in a bit. WhatsApp is 80 959 805 we've got the we've got two lines one of the numbers for men one of the numbers for women the number for men 0700 993 993 993 the other number for women 01465 7190 01465 7190 two numbers um, for everyone to be able to get equal access to the show. We've got D1 on the line. D1 is an Omole today. I hope it's okay. Omole or Omole. How do, you, how do you say that? Omole. 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 Okay. Yeah, close <laughs> welcome. to Ikeja. Oh, welcome. All right, go ahead. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, first of all, I want to thank you. This is the first time I'm listening to this program. I was scanning through. I had COVID and I stopped. Okay. Now, um, I noticed you've done a lot of research and I like the way you handled Anonymous. Um, this is, um, most of the time when I listen to OAPs, I discover most of them don't even know the, about, the, they, don't, they don't research the topic before putting it out there. But I'm so happy with the things I heard from you today. It has uh, broadened my knowledge by a few points, and I'm very grateful for that. You're welcome. Um, the second one is, if you go to the market, hmm. you will discover that people don't even care. Somebody came to my house with somebody, and I, I had my mask on, and the person that was not even my guest hmm. was telling me, why do you have this thing on? And I said... I didn't shake them when they came in. Mm. <clears throat> and I said, it's for COVID prevention. Mm -hmm. In fact, when they came at the gate, I had to sanitize them. And I sanitized myself in their presence mm. because some people even turned down sanitizers. Wow. <laughs> so the lady now said, oh God, it is the, it is the mask that is actually killing people, oh God. not the COVID. And, you know, uh, if, if she were my guest, the two of them would have been on their way out. But she came with somebody. Hmm. And the person she came with had the mask on. Hmm. And I looked at it that we are in deep trouble. And you see people trying to sell something to you in the traffic. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And unfortunately, we pray so much, so much that other countries are also praying. Hmm. But possibly the the the. They are not as wicked as Nigerians. <laughs> and God is answering their prayers earlier than Nigerians. Because we seem to pray so much, but we, we, we nullify the prayers with our negativity and wickedness. Okay. You know? And I just don't know. Then normally we'll end it with 
God help God help us, you know, and things like that. Yeah, God will help us, but at the same time, I believe as well that we can also find it in the scriptures about cleanliness. You know, if we can just be clean, talk about soap, which is the greatest invention as far as I'm concerned in the history of mankind. <laughs> how 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 the tide of death was turned when soap was discovered, hmm. we, 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 we go places. Hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you Bye. so much, D1, Bye. for calling. We're glad he listened today for the first time and we were talking about something that made him call in and get through today for the first time. We've got um, Volcano... Hold on. Adept Dan on Twitter, who says, Trust me, most Nigerians don't give a hoot anymore. Post-lockdown, almost everyone has been living like nothing is out there. On my way to ABK last week, I took a commercial bus and surprisingly, I was the only one wearing a face mask out of 15 of us. Well, like they say, um, uh, salvation is a, is a personal race, right? So, uh, unfortunately, this particular one is not even really a personal race because somebody's stupidity could infect you. You know, you can be taking all the precautions and, you know, some person somewhere, you know, who is a you know, what they call people who don't buy COVID, you know, those people will come with their COVID and they are asymptomatic and they will infect you. And they say, oh, come off it. There's no COVID out there. <laughs> and they infect you. So this is one of those things where while it's um, a personal race, it's also not really a personal race because you can be running your personal race, minding your business, and someone will just kubai you. We've got success in VI on the line. Success, how are you? I'm fine. Good evening, Sandra. Good evening. Welcome. Go ahead. Okay. I just listened to your <laughs> listening to Nigerian plans on how to uh, share the COVID nineteen uh, vaccine. Uh, vaccine, and mm. I was laughing. Why? I'm walking. <laughs> I'm walking, and I'm laughing. Why? The Nigerian <laughs> government. <laughs> they cannot stop you for me. <laughs> okay. First of all, how mm. many doses of uh, the vaccine? Are they expecting? They're, Although you have mentioned this, but I cannot calculate it all by heart now. They're, they're expecting one point four million. Okay, 1.4 million. Yes. All the age brackets, all the age bracket, the groups that they mentioned. Mm. Do they know how many people that are in each of those uh, age brackets? Not to even be sure that the 1.4 million would be enough for for the um, headline front uh, line workers. Mm. So how are they going to? How are they sure that this number of um, vaccines that they are getting mm. will even take care of the first group? Secondly, why are they pre pre uh, preventing private individuals? Why, are they going to, why do they don't want to make it difficult for private individuals to get it on their own? You know, you can, if you can afford it, mm. you should be free to get it. If you understand and vaccinate yeah. yourself. You don't have to wait for government because all these things they are doing now, bottleneck. Just like they are trying to create a bottleneck, making it difficult for individuals who can afford it to, to, do to, it get, to take the vaccine. You understand? But you know... So sometimes when I look at their, their, their plan. plans and how they do mm. things, Okay, but but, but but here's the thing, yeah. That one point four that one point four million is the is the first dose for the first two months. But they're expecting seventy to ninety million doses this year. They're hoping for about hundred million in the next year. Oh, that means it's a continuous uh, yes, it's, it's, affair that yeah. will take almost all the through throughout the year. Yes. Okay, we are watching how the common man we know we get to common man in Nigeria. Success. Thank you very much for calling us. The problem with individuals getting it on their own is certification. Because at the end of the day, and I still Niger last last, and you, you, you don't want to um, get vaccines that uh, you can't get certification for. I mean, we already have people who are selling fake yellow fever vaccination cards, fake ne uh, fake. Um, What's it called now? Uh, what's the name of that? Fake COVID tests, fake negative COVID tests at the airport for people who want to travel. So how sure can we now be that those vaccines were, number one, properly sourced, number two, are genuine, number three, have been properly stored, number four, have actually been given in the way they're supposed to be given? Now, these are the concerns of the government. They're not my concerns, but they're the concerns of the government. 0700-993-993-993. If you are a woman, we've got a number for women to call. And that number is 01-465-7190. So the men can call 0700-993-993-993-993. 
and the women 0146571190. Ibrahim Nikorodu, welcome to the show. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for this important topic that you brought up today. Okay. Um, actually, if you see the way people handle the issue of COVID-19, I'm always shocked to discover that it is the so-called um, learned people, educated people, mm. that um, are even showing so much apathy to COVID-19. Right. Let me tell you something. I lost a cousin oh, on the sorry. first of I'm sorry. December, and she died of COVID-19. I'm sorry. And I'm yet to get over it. That almost the whole family went into self-isolation because we had contact with her. Oh, I'm sorry. So it's not a joke. After coming out of isolation, I've done COVID-19 tests myself. Okay. And then, thank God, it came out negative. Okay. You see, when we talk about COVID-19, everybody has to be very, very careful. It has brought the world into a standstill, and we shouldn't joke about it. I had a friend that I had to unfriend her on Facebook, and I blocked her on WhatsApp because of her attitude towards COVID-19. She's a graduate, and I was talking to her about it. I had to scream that I lost someone. I just came out of self-isolation, mm. and she was still telling me she's in Enugu. She was still arguing with me that it was a, it was a religious nothing about COVID-19. Mm. You will see the way people handle it. And as per the vaccine, honestly, who will face it? We appreciate it. Mm. We should be happy that at least it's coming in. Mm. What we should be talking about is how is it going to be distributed? Mm. Let us forget about the issue of the government is this, the government is that, they will give all the ministers, they will give all these things. When the time comes, I know everybody will get it. What, what do you think about Anonymous' um, opinion that fear is what causes some of the deaths with COVID? Um, actually, I was listening to a program, I think, on this station mm. on a Saturday morning. Okay. A doctor came into the program, but I think it was a full name. I think he, okay, yeah, he was, she was invited to talk about COVID. Okay. She said, Do you, if you are able to discover or suspect that you have COVID, mm. that in Nigeria today the treatment is less than 5,000 naira. Mm. But if you show apathy and you get hit, 5 billion will not solve it if you don't die. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Nigeria, honestly, the Nigerian medical personnel, I give it to them. In Nigeria, we only find a way for anything. They were able to find a way for some drug that they used to manage it before it fell into an incurable stage. Mm. So, honestly, I give it to them. There was a time the governor of Lagos State said, if anybody shows the sign of acute malaria, mm -hmm. they should treat them as COVID-19. Mm. People were screaming, how can you say that? That's what we are saying, this and that. Honestly, at that stage, for mere suspicion of it, they know that it is too easy to treat with less than 5,000 naira. Mm. That's why they are saying, look, let us, look, my cousin that died, mm -hmm. she didn't show any sign of COVID-19, honestly. Mm. We were with her, we were joking, I was even joking with her. She didn't show any sign. Mm. She showed the sign on a... Thursday mm. by Friday morning, sorry, on its Wednesday, mm -hmm. by Thursday morning, that is first of December, she was dead. Wow. With wow. just the, what is it called, with just the difficulty in breathing. Wow. The difficulty in breathing came in less than 10 hours and she passed on. Okay. So if there was suspicion from day one mm. and they commenced that treatment, probably she would have survived it. Mm. So we have to be extremely careful. We shouldn't joke with it. I went for, I think I went to Elori about three weeks ago. Okay. I discovered that I was the only one almost wearing nose masks everywhere. In my car, I have packets of nose masks in my car. Mm -hmm. I was the only one wearing nose masks. I was looking at, at myself as if, ah, am I coming from the Jupiter or something? <laughs> but honestly, I was comfortable with it because I had seen it. Let her walk. So I'm being very careful about it. Ibrahim, I'm terribly sorry for your loss, and I thank you for sharing thank your you. story with me. You know, people are traveling with fake COVID test results, and the government has had it. NCDC is saying that they're taking serious steps to crack down and punish people 
uh, coming into Nigeria with fake uh, fake um, test certificates. Basically, they're saying that if someone is caught doing it, they're going to get forced into quarantine. They will be made to pay the cost of the quarantine and the new tests. But I'm, I'm scratching my head here because I'm wondering what type of human being fakes a COVID test. So the person just wants to travel no matter what. If they don't believe they don't, if, if they believe they don't have COVID, why not just go ahead and do a test? Why are you dodging the test? Because you're afraid you have COVID and you won't be allowed to travel. Because in that case, you're just willing to infect everybody around you. Or is it a money thing? Is it Are they just trying to avoid paying for a COVID test? So they pay for a cheaper fake test instead? I don't know. Now, wow. And this problem of fake tests is both inbound and outbound. So you also have people in Nigeria getting fake results in Nigeria in order to travel out. NCDC is also trying to stop that as well. They're launching a platform to authenticate all test results. Basically, they want all accredited centers to join the platform. That way, when somebody shows up at an airport with a certificate from a testing center, the officials will be able to check the platform to see whether the certificate is legit and if it matches the person. And it's making me wonder whether we are about to see a global version of that platform. Imagine if all countries start setting up the test authentication platforms and start demanding that um, all the countries that the that people have traveled to all the all the all the all the countries um all the people who want to travel who have travel links must also have the same platforms so that passengers can be checked it's going to be very interesting to see what um, governments do with all this new data collection capacity after the pandemic but yeah, that's where we're at. That's uh, how Nigeria is handling the war on COVID. I told you about vaccines. I've told you about the fake certificates that people are traveling with. What do you think about the plan to put all testing centers on an NCDC data platform? And what do you think about all these people who are traveling with fake COVID results? Like, why? We've got a message on WhatsApp. Sandra, I do not envy you. Why would some people be interested in putting you to task by asking some stupid questions or even doubting the existence of COVID at this time? Some even say that OAPs are supporting government. Nigerians, Nawal. <laughs> you didn't put your name though, but thank you for your message. Sandra, I don't know what else to do about the fight against COVID. I've talked and talked. I've gotten tired. What do I do when my wife and other family members treat COVID with a loose hand? They flout the rules on a daily basis. They believe that the disease doesn't exist. They've been exposing my newborn baby to the disease by their activities. What else do I do? Michael sounds like he's at his wit's end there. Francis says, Sandra, it's a shame. And uh, it's a shame of a government and irresponsible of NCDC. My friend tested positive. There's no treatment for him. He's at home with his family. Sadly, if there's no care, so what's all the noise about? I'm terribly sorry about what your friend is going through. Kenny is in transit and Kenny says that um, according to the mirror, there's a new COVID strain from Nigeria, which could be resistant to the recent vaccines. Please educate your listeners. Kenny, thank you for your message. At this point, let me give you a chance to win 10,000 Naira on the show, right? The score that you have to beat today is very high, my people. The person that scored nine on the sunny side is waiting for you. So if you want to win, good luck. Are in experiencing salary delays? In need of school fees, loan, or house rent? Does your business need expansion and you've got no money? Do you need a car or equipment for personal or business use? Worry no more. With Credit Bill Auto Lease and Flexible Loan Products, you are just a call away from achieving your financial goal. Simply dial 0805-510-0010. You can also send us an email via info at creditville.ng or log on to www.creditville.ng. Creditville, financing you for a good life. All right, let's go. You've got to answer as many questions as possible, as quickly as possible. The high score to beat is um, nine. Hello, thanks for calling us. Hello. Thanks for calling us. Yeah, good evening. My name is Victor. Victor, when you win, stay on the line, all right? Okay. All right. 
This is just a minute. Yomi or Mosowan is the managing director of what company? The LCC. How much money does LCC say that it has lost since it stopped operating at Lekki Tollgate? 30 billion naira. How many northern governors visited Shasha Market? Four. Name one of the states from those. Name one of the states that those uh, northern governors are from. Um, Kaduna. In what state is Shasha Market? You know your state. How many COVID deaths did Nigeria record on Saturday? Twenty-four. There is now an outbreak of which disease in Guinea? Ebola. Nigeria is getting 500,000 doses of which COVID vaccine from Avat this month? Skip. Well, unfortunately, you're not our winner today because you answered six questions correctly, but that was a re really good run. <laughs> the person who answered nine on the sunny side is our winner today. Congratulations to them. And uh, I can't wait to do this again with you tomorrow. Tune in at three. In the meantime, I'm Sandra Ezekwesili on social media, Ezekwesili on Facebook, Ezekwesili on Twitter, Ezekwesili on Instagram. Those are your hot facts. 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3 Nigeria Info. on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Nigeria's biggest conversation. President Muhammad Buhari says the country.